P5 started with a really clear set of values and goals. It didn't start out with a list of like technical features that it should have. And that's always been the guiding roadmap for the project. We come back to that, like, how is it meeting these goals of access and inclusion? Um, and I think to see the project last for more than 10 years now and grow to the scale that it has is a testament to the fact that you really can build technology on a set of values that you want to hold and it can be sustainable and successful. And it's only one example. It's a work in progress and it evolves and it grows and it learns. You know, the community learns together. My name is Lauren Lee McCarthy. I'm an artist, uh, I teach at UCLA, and I was the creator of P5 and the project lead for the project for a number of years, and also formerly served on the board of the Processing Foundation, and now I'm an advisor. It actually started, I was a grad student at UCLA and Casey Reese was my professor. It was after grad school that I was feeling like, oh, I use a lot of open source tools. I'm using things that other artists have made. Can I give back somehow? Can I contribute also? And when I started trying to do that, I realized that it wasn't that easy, not because I couldn't figure out how to write the code, but because a lot of those spaces felt very exclusive. Like sure, anyone can use these tools, but to be someone that's actually contributing and making it felt like a very small group of people. Most of those people were men, most of them were white, and it felt like this kind of space that if you wanted to actually contribute, you had to like prove yourself as an expert before anyone would take you seriously. And so I was kind of ranting about this to Casey, and then that was the, I think the impetus for him and Ben and Dan inviting me to um, work on processing. My initial invitation into processing and working on P5 was actually as one of the first uh, processing fellows in 2013. So it was the first cohort and there were three of us and the program didn't really exist at that time. So they were just figuring out what happens if we give a few people a little bit of money, <laughs> basically. And so the first invitation was like, would you want to think about processing on the web? And that's kind of where P5.js was was born in some way, although at the time it was really just like a little experimental project. When it started, I didn't anticipate it would become something so large and um, so long lasting. But I do remember in that first conversation with Casey, where I was kind of saying like, I want to see things change. I want to see more women and women of color like in this space. Um, the other thing I was saying was, but I don't know what to do. Like, I don't feel like an activist. I don't feel like I have some big plan. Like some of the few women I see out there, it's like they seem to have this like whole vision for how something big is gonna happen. And I remember him saying like, maybe you don't need a whole plan. Maybe you just start with one little thing that you try and like see where it goes from there. And I think that's how P5 has really evolved. It's, it's never had like a top down like, here's all the steps and here's our 10 year growth plan or something like that. It was really this kind of like constant iteration and evolution. I think there have been a number of moments where it really felt clear that P5 had a, a life of its own. And I remember one of the first ones was really early on. It was like the Contributors Conference in 2014 at CMU, um, at the Studio for Creative Inquiry. And we called it really explicitly a Contributors Conference and not a DevCon or developers conference to get across the idea that a contributor could be someone working on the code or could be working on many other parts of the project and all of those were equally valuable. So not creating a distinction. Um, and then everyone got together and just started helping each other. And I remember this moment a couple days in where I was just sitting and watching someone that had just learned to code and had just learned to like how to contribute to the source code for P5, sitting next to, this is like a, a woman of color, sitting next to another woman of color and like teaching her how to do it. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it's happening. Like I, I, <laughs> I said that this could happen and then like we believed in it and it's, it's real. Um, and then that felt like proof, like because it felt like we were taking this sort of radical approach of like, no, we don't just need a bunch of nerds in the room. We need a lot of different people. Um, 
And then when we got a lot of different people, it felt like the energy felt really good, the project moved forward, and it felt possible. So that was one. Um, I think uh, a similar kind of uh, moment was when we moved to a rotating leadership model. So instead of me leading the project, we felt like other people should have that space too. So it's not just one person's vision kind of guiding. And it was a really long like community process. A group of volunteers got together and went through all the applications uh, really thoughtfully and interviewed and um, selected finalists. And we finally got to the point where we were able to make that transition. And that had been another moment of like, trying to kind of manifest and say like, this is possible, right? And then now seeing like Chen Chen leading the project and previously it had been Chen Chen and Evelyn Miso um, and before that, Maura Turner. Um, and seeing these different people being able to lead it and carry it and really feel like it's their own um, has been incredible. Cause it's like, wow, it's like really has its own life now stewarded by different people in the community. I feel like sometimes there's this narrative of like, is this technical development or is this community stuff? And those two are two separate things. Mm -hmm. And often what happens in tech spaces is like the technical thing gets prioritized and the, the community manager or the, the other stuff, the soft skills are like the secondary thing. And I think what's always been central to the work with, with P5 especially and with the foundation is that there's no separating them. Doing community work is making the tool and making the tool is because you're supporting communities. I think the foundation and P5 and processing really, on in one hand, we're about asking what if. Whenever we didn't have enough money or the thing didn't work or we couldn't find the time or whatever, um, we would get to these points where it felt like everything's kind of broken. It would, I would ask like, what would be the dream version? kind of asking what if or asking what, how do we be aspirational is the way that we got to a rotating leadership model. It's the way that we ended up getting a lot of donations and support from the community in the end. And it's the way that a lot of people have come into the project. Like, what if I could work on that? What if I could become a fellow? It's one thing to make a tool. Um, I think it's another to be able to like seed different artists and collectives and community members with the, the power themselves to build their own things. And I think that time when you're just getting started is so crucial. You do need a lot of support and encouragement and, and money too, but like you need someone to believe in you, especially if you're the kind of person that hasn't gotten the message your whole life that like you belong in this space, you look like the kind of person that should be in this space. And so I think the work of the foundation is really widening who gets to see themselves in that space and, and grow and, and flourish in it. And so I guess one hope with the foundation is like that, that energy can continue, um, that everybody contributing to a project is, is equally valuable, that there's not a priority of, of intellect or the type of contribution that someone's making.